This baby Hylonomus leads the advance. As a new creature, the reptile. Inevitably, with life, comes death. Dead plant matter builds up and decays into dense, soggy layers. Over hundreds of millions of years, rocks cover these layers, and heat from the Earth's core and pressure from the overlying rocks transform these layers into seams of coal. Each lump of coal burned today is made of plants that died 300 million years ago. Amidst the decay, hidden from sight, life is stirring. Soon, seeds will germinate, plants will grow, and this wasteland will live again. Life seems to have conquered the planet, but will it last? A herd of creatures graze the Siberian plains, and they are big. Evolution takes a huge leap forward. Small lizards are now giant reptiles. These scutosaurs are distant relatives of turtles. If these plant eaters look tough, the carnivores must be seriously mean. like this Gorgonopsid, a perfectly engineered prehistoric killing machine. The Gorgonopsid's saber teeth wound the Scutosaur. Predator watches as its prey grows weak from blood loss. But before it can make its final move, something strange happens. The ground gets hot. Enormous pressure builds beneath the surface and lava spews into the air. lava isn't from one single volcano. The entire landscape is erupting. It's a flood basalt eruption. A massive plume of mantle rises up from deep inside the earth and pushes molten rock out through fissures in the earth's crust. The lush paradise is now a lifeless hell. The Scutosaurs and the Gorgonopsids are dead. They're the first casualties in the greatest mass extinction the world has ever seen. The Permian Extinction. A 
On the other side of the continent Gondwana, nothing's changed. Yet. It appears to be snowing, but the temperature is about 70 degrees. It's actually ash, fallout from the eruptions some 10,000 miles away. The ash burns and suffocates the animals, killing them around the world. Sulfur dioxide from the eruptions fills the atmosphere. As it rains, the gas turns to sulfuric acid and burns everything it falls on. What was a local disaster has now turned global. The Siberian eruptions increase the Earth's carbon dioxide levels. The atmosphere gets hotter. Water evaporates. And vegetation dies. Around the world, life on land is being wiped out. And life in the oceans has also been compromised. The waters turn pink. Plants, trilobites and predators disappear. The new hotter atmosphere heated the oceans and stripped them of oxygen. Now this pink algae is one of the few life forms that can survive in the stagnant water. The Siberian eruptions transformed the entire planet. Nothing, not even the deepest ocean floor, is beyond their reach. Bubbles of methane gas escape from beneath the seabed. Methane is a greenhouse gas, at least 20 times deadlier than carbon dioxide. Until now, the gas has been frozen, but as the sea temperature rises, it begins to melt. Released into the atmosphere, this powerful gas pushes up temperatures even further. It's now almost 105 degrees, 11 degrees hotter than before the Siberian eruptions. Creatures that survived the initial destruction now face a new and deadly environment. Few will live. It's been 500,000 years since the eruptions first began, and all this time, the lava's been pouring out. By now, it covers an area the size of the United States, with a layer of molten rock nearly four miles deep. Ninety-five percent of the species are gone. A few survive by eating anything they can find and living in burrows underground. But everything else is dead. 250 million years ago, the Earth reverts back 
to an almost lifeless planet. But that's about to change again. It's been 50 million years since virtually all life on Earth was wiped out. And the planet has been transformed. It's now 200 million years ago. And just one supercontinent, Pangaea, stretches from pole to pole. After the trauma of the mass extinction, the planet heals. Temperatures stabilize. The acid rain neutralizes and vegetation returns. With 95% of all life on Earth wiped out, the field opens for a new species to emerge. One that will dominate the planet like no other. the dinosaurs. These are called amosaurs. Like all dinos, they evolved from the reptiles that survived the Permian extinction. At 15 feet tall, their size makes them slow and vulnerable. Nearby is the Dilophosaurus. It's small and fast. The Amosaurus is too big a meal for one Dilophosaurus, but not for two. The dinosaurs have repopulated the Earth, but no species can tame this restless, volatile planet. The Earth's crust is thinning. It's releasing lava and shaking with earthquakes, as if being stretched by some unseen force. It's also happening near what will become North America's eastern seaboard. The Earth's plates are on the move again. 190 million years ago, the great supercontinent of Pangaea tears apart. A vast slab of land breaks away, creating a chasm. It fills with a new ocean called the Tethys over what will one day be the Middle East. Currents push nutrients up into the coastal waters. And the nutrients attract fish in the millions. <laughs> 